hearts plunged in war. These words of precious redemption take it wherever you go. Chapter 5. And they came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no man could bind him, no, not with chains, because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains, and the chains had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there, nigh unto the mountains, a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea, they were about two thousand, and were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that was done. And they come to Jesus, and see him that was possessed with the devil, and had the legion, sitting, and clothed, and in his right mind. And they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil, and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coasts. And when he was come into the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed, and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him. And all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by ship unto the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. 
And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him, and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing bettered, but rather grew worse, when she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them all out, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand, and said unto her, Talitha cumai, which is, being interpreted, Damsel, I say unto thee, Arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. May God help us to be doers of the word. Amen.
Lord's emails was sitting by the roadside begging. His hands were extended in need. He had little hope of escaping his life. A blind beggar was all he would be. He had a commotion. People had gathered. Someone said Jesus was nigh. He cried, Son of David, have mercy on me. And by his faith was given his sight. Make way for the master. Jesus is passing by. Oh, Lord, his He will bring you back. He will be the blessed hope for all men. The priest of long darkness. blind man begging to search for a glimpse of the light waking each morning with fear and despair still haunted by shadows of night then one day a preacher talked of her savior someone took me by the hand i cried out for mercy and he came to me in a moment a new life began Make way for the master Jesus is passing by All oh, now is dead He will bring you life In him is a blessed hope for a man A prince of strong darkness to life And he's in the house again tonight. And the Lord is ready to use him in a mighty way again tonight. Put your hands together for Jesus as our pastor, Pastor W. of Kumi, comes up again. Welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. It's a joy. I'm so excited for the Bible study tonight. 
And I pray that the real meat of the word, the depths of the word, the understanding of the word, the Lord will give to you. And the Lord will turn your life around. This will be a never to be forgotten Bible study. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you tonight. We bless your name for our Bible study. Thank you for your people. They are so excited, wanting to hear whatever it is you have for us as individuals, for families, as well as for the whole church. We're asking, O oh Lord, as your word penetrates every life, power will penetrate every life. Grace will saturate every life. And your goodness will be around everyone, within everyone. Put testimony in every mouth in Jesus' name. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. You can see now God bless you. Today we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I want to tell you this before uh, we uh, continue. There are people that do not think that studying the Bible gives them an open door to the miracle power of God. But you need to understand that the whole world is profitable for everyone. I remember I was going on the way that time I didn't have you know too many people around me to go everywhere with me and then I saw a brother oh and I said praise the Lord how are you oh he said I'm fine then he said can I give you a testimony I said please go ahead he said I was at the Bible study and last Monday that's not this last Monday but you know when he was talking he said I was at the Bible study last Monday and I was under serious pain and serious sickness and of course you didn't know you were just teaching the Bible and in the middle of the teaching all of a sudden all the sickness vanished away you know that was Bible study and today every word that is read will bring power into your life in Jesus name we're coming to first Corinthians chapter 11 and I'm reading from verse 1 be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says now I praise you brethren that she remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. In verse 3 it says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. He's talking about headship here. And it says, Christ, our Lord, our Savior, our Master, the very Son of God, does not live independent of God the Father. That the head of Christ is God. And then the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. Please understand. It is say the head of the woman is man. No, not general. The head of this woman is this man. He's talking about the family there. That the head of the wife is the husband. Let's come to verse 16. In verse 16, it tells us, But if any man seem to be contentious, that he is, if there are people, when they come to read the Bible, they say, let's discuss. Let me give you my opinion. And then you tell me your opinion. And then I say, no, I don't accept that. I don't agree with that. And there's contention. It says, 
if any man seem to be contentious, we have no such custom. We don't argue with God. We don't argue with Christ. We don't argue with the word of God. And if there's any man, if there's any person who is contentious, we we'll want to remind that person there is nothing like that, no custom like that, neither for the individual nor for the churches of God. Tonight, there will be no contention in your heart. No disagreement in your heart. As the word comes seen, it sinks in, and power will manifest itself in your life in Jesus' name. Tonight, we're looking at the word under the subject, following Christ's steps without self-centeredness. Following Christ's steps without self-centeredness. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the pattern of our master's submission to the father. Number two, the principle of man's submission for fruitfulness. Number three, the profit of the woman's submission in his fullness. You notice something there? In point number one, there's the word submission. The master's submission. In point number two, there is the word again, submission. And it's the man's submission. And then in point three, the word submission still comes and it's the woman's submission. Let me tell you something about submission. Uh, there are people that are negative to the word submission. But when you come to Christ, and it says Christ, it's his submission to the Heavenly Father. Now, there was a centurion. And this centurion came to Christ and said, My servant lies homesick of the palsy, grievously tormented, was vexed. And Jesus said, I'll come with you. I'll come to your house and get him healed. The man said, no, don't come to my house. I'm not that significant. I'm not that important. I'm not worthy. But speak the word only and my servant shall be healed. He knew the authority of the word. He said, I'm saying that because I am a man under authority. I'm in submission. I have a captain over me. I have an officer over me. And I'm under his authority. And then I have soldiers under me too. Here I am. I have authority above me. I have some people who submit under me because I submit to the one above. All those who are beneath, they submit. And he said, I know. If you will tell and if you will say the word to any of the sicknesses, 100% of them, as I have 100 soldiers under me, your word will cast out everything that is evil on the basis of submission because you are submissive to the father therefore all sicknesses all infirmities all powers will be subject unto you that is in principle god works out when christ submitted to the father then the father gave him all authority that anything everything he will demand the father will give and when the disciples submitted to christ then as they went out they came back and they said even the devils are subject unto us through your name on the basis of submission number one the master's submission number two man's submission number three the woman's submission and submission in the right sense will lift you up will build you up your amen is amen 
and the power of God will be manifested in your life as you are submissive to the word of the Almighty God tonight in Jesus' name. And then let's look at number one the pattern of our master's submission to the Father. Look at it again in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm reading from verses 1 to 3. It says, be followers of me, even as I am also of Christ. You know, Paul the Apostle, the moment the Lord met him, the word submission became important. They said, Lord, what will you have me to do? I used to call the shot. I used to go anywhere I wanted to go. In fact, I could go to the houses of those Christians and arrest them. Nobody was a captain over me. But now I come to know the Lord. And now I submit myself. What will you have me to do? He said, now nah, following Christ. Christ is, submitted to, is submissive to the Father, and I am submissive unto Christ. Look at verse 2. He said, now I praise you, brethren, that she remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them them to you what's that that's submission they heard the word of god they said the word of god is perfect as it is we don't add we don't take away as it was delivered unto them they kept and that's submission when the word of god is given to you and then you keep it just like that without adding your own opinion without adding your own tradition without adding your own knowledge without adding your preference i don't like that one this is the one i like without adding your own preferences and you say this is the word delivered unto me i accept that the submission of the christian look at how christ did it in john chapter 8 john chapter 8 i'm reading from verse 28 john chapter 8 we're looking at verse 28 it says then said jesus unto them when ye have lifted up the son of man then shall ye know that i am he and that i do nothing of myself look at jesus our savior our master our lord our redeemer our shepherd he said he that had been from all eternity from eternity he came to this world he said i do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me wait a minute christ who had been from all eternity behold a child is born the son is given unto us and the government shall be upon a shoulder the government of the whole universe upon a shoulder and yet he said as my father has taught me you know there are some people once they have a little paper certificate diploma they, are, they cannot be taught you cannot teach them once they know a little bit of grammar i understand that by myself i know all the grammar there once they know a little bit of grammar you cannot teach them but jesus christ in total submission to the heavenly father he said i do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me i speak these things and paul the apostle said that's exactly what i do i follow the example of christ as he teaches me as he reveals to me that's what i would also do and he's giving you the same thing that spirit of submission will be your life in jesus name look at verse 29 in verse 29 it says and he that sent me is with me he said i'm conscious of the time i don't bring a personal opinion i don't bring a personal idea because the one that sent me is always by my side the father has not left me alone for i do always that submission that submission 
I'm not going to please myself. I'm not going to be self-centered. For I do always those things that please him. I pray the Lord will be able to say that about every one of us in Jesus' name. Look at John chapter 12. I'm reading from verse 49. John chapter 12. We're looking at verse 49. It says, For I have not spoken of myself. Submission. I have not spoken of myself, but the Father which sent me, he gave me a commandment. Wait a minute. Lord Jesus Christ, he is Lord, he is King of Kings, he is Lord of Lords, and he said, the Father gave me commandment. You know, some people who say they are Christians, I'm a Christian, I'm born again, I'm sanctified, I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. They say I'm holy, they say I'm perfect. Give them instruction, give them commandment. Say, This is the way to go. They said, No, I don't agree with that. This is the other way I'm going to go. Because you know, I want to be independent. I want, and they're indifferent to whatever anybody is saying. That's not like Christ. Christ said, the Father gave me a commandment. What I should say and what I should speak. Look at verse 50. In verse 50 it says, and I know that his commandment is ever life everlasting. That he is to live the life everlasting it's the word, it's the commandment of the Father. He's giving it to you whatsoever I speak therefore, even as the Father has said unto me, so I speak. That's the submission of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray that that same heart, that same spirit, that same comportment, the Lord will give unto you. And look at what look at what we ought to do in first Peter chapter 2 verse 21. First Peter chapter 2 verse 21. It tells us, for even here unto were ye called. Here is your calling. And here is the expectation of heaven upon your life. Here unto were ye called. Because Christ also suffered for us leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps his steps always in submission to the heavenly father always in submission to god not having an independent spirit and not having an indifferent attitude but all the time being obedient unto the father and I pray that that same lifestyle that heaven approves, that same lifestyle of submission to God and submission to Christ, the Lord will give unto you. And heaven will pay attention to your life. You know, when you have obedience like that, yieldedness like that unto the Lord, if you move this way, power will move with you. If you go this other way, protection and provision will be for your life in Jesus' name. And let's come back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And we're looking at verse 3 here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we're reading from verse 3. It says, but I would have you know. I say, he said, if you forget any other sin, and if you don't recognize any other sin, if you're ignorant of any other sin, this I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ. That means we're not going about isolated, unconnected, and doing anything you want every time. 
you think alone, you walk alone, you act alone, you speak alone, you plan alone, you do everything and perform everything all alone. It's only when you get into trouble, then you come back to God and say, God, I'm in trouble. Why didn't you come at the first time? Why didn't you say, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to act? What do you want me to say? How should I live my life? You made your choice. After making the choice, your choice got you into trouble. Now you're running back to God. Why didn't you tell him at the beginning, I want to make this choice, the choice of a wife, the choice of a husband, and the choice of a job, and the choice of where I will live, and the choice of what I will do. You made the choice without any connection or consultation with the Lord. Now you get into trouble. Lord, I mean, deep waters, what am I going to do? Change it around. Before you take that step, I would have you know that the head of every man who wants to take a decision, who wants to live a victorious life, who wants to live to please the Lord, the head of the man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. Uh, you know, it's uh, difficult to give you this illustration, but let me throw it to you all the same. A person who has a head and never consults the head, the hands move without consultation with the head. The legs move without consultation with the head. And the eyes turn here and there without any directive from the head. When that happens, there's no coordination. When that happens, there is no integration. When that happens, there is no normalcy. And it says the edge of the woman is the man. That's the husband. I'm not talking so that whatever you did in the past, you feel guilty. No, I'm talking, I'm telling you now that the new life we ought to live from today and the glorious life we ought to live from today is that the body will be consulting the head. Don't cut off from your head. If a head is cut off, the body becomes useless, inoperative, inactive, and cannot achieve. The head of the wife, say directly, is the husband. And the wife should not be acting without you know, any consultation, without any discussion. I'm, you know, he's a graduate, I'm a graduate. He is educated, I'm educated. He has a car, personal car, I have a personal car. So, what else? The else that remains is that the word of God says, car apart education apart, certificate apart, and the being a linguist, that one apart, the head of the woman is the man. Can I have the sister say good amen? amen. The Lord will bless your family. Amen. Everything you ever dreamt of and everything you desired, the Lord will grant unto you in Jesus' name. And then, and then, it says, and the head of Christ is God. The head of Christ is God. Let me show you something. You see, there are people, they read one page of the Bible, they don't read the other page, and so they go astray. We're going to read two verses now, and we're going to join those two verses together. It's John chapter 10. John chapter 10, we're looking at verse 30. John chapter 10, verse 30. I and my father are one. I and my father are one. One, we're united. We're together. And as he is, so I am. 
as I am, so he is. I and my father are one. But you know, if you now join chapter 14, verse 28, chapter 14, verse 28, look at what it says. Ye have heard how I said unto you, I go away and come again unto you. If ye loved me, ye would have rejoiced. Ye would rejoice because I said, I go unto the Father. If you have your Bible there, read what ends that sentence. For, for, say that again, for, but you know he had said, I and my Father are one. Actually, the Jews wanted to stone him because he made himself equal to God. You see, there are people that emphasize that equality, just that equality. And, you know, all through their lives, they are saying, hey, what you can do, I can do. What a man can do, a woman can do. Where you can go, I can go there too. Whatever you achieve, I can achieve. Maybe that's true. I and my father are one. And now he balanced it up. He said, for my father is greater than I. That's the reason for the submission. There are times by the grace of God, husband and wife, they are one, they're equal. The husband has only one head. And the wife has one head and the woman has two eyes sharp sight sharp sighted and the man has only two eyes not three and the woman has two legs she might even be an athlete and those legs are well trained but the man has not three legs but two and has one heart has one soul and the same thing with the husband I and my husband are one. Yet, the Lord has so put things that you'll still be able to recognize He is greater than I. The Lord give you understanding. There will be peace in your family. There will be unity in your family. As you follow the Lord, God will give you the authority of a submissive person in Jesus' name. And we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 27. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, we're reading from verse 27. It says in verse 27, For he that put all things under, for he has put all things under his feet. But when he says all things are put under him, it is manifest that he is accepted, is accepted that did put all things under him in verse 28. Verse 28, and when all things shall be subdued unto him, then shall the Son also himself be subject unto him that put all things under him that God the Father may be all in all somebody say amen, amen. that's the submission of Christ to the Father let's come to point number two now point number two the principle of man's submission for fruitfulness. We're coming back to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. And I'm going to read from verses 3 and 4. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3, it says, But I would have you to know that the head of every man is Christ. The head of every man is Christ. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, every man praying or prophesying having his head covered dishonoreth his head uh, notice something here it talks about the head that's the physical head the natural head being covered but you know uh, churches that 
uh, evangelical, Pentecostal churches that are holy and deeper. They only think and talk about the covering. And if you see a man that wears a cap in the church, they run to him and say, remove your cap. Because there's one verse of scripture. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonors his head. That's true. That's true. But you know, after removing the cap, they don't teach those men how to pray. Because the reason for not covering the head that time is praying. And there are people that have been in the church for 10 years, for 15 years. They're still struggling on how to pray, how to prophesy, how to preach, how to expound the word of God. Because the church emphasizes only one thing there, not covering the head so that it doesn't dishonor the head. But telling the purpose is like, you know, you talk about our dressing. And you tell me I have to dress well. Thank you, sir. That's right. But after the dressing, what do I do? You don't teach me how to appear well so I can work the work I ought to do. I can pray the prayer to pray. I can prophesy. I can preach what I need to preach. I can be a good professional. The dress does not make the man. It's good that he dresses well, but tell him what he is supposed to do with that good dressing. That's why we need to emphasize this verse for every man praying every man praying that's the reason he shouldn't cover his said that time but let him do the prayer look at luke chapter 18 luke chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 1 in luke chapter 18 verse 1 it says and he spake a parable unto them to this age that men ought always to pray and not to faint. We have not connected that with the dressing, most of us. We say, I must not wear a cap in the church. You are right. But you must pray in the church and pray in faith and pray to the Father and pray for the fullness and fruitfulness the Lord has given us. It's not enough to say, I'm in church now, I'm not wearing a cap. That's all right. But the purpose is to learn how to pray and pray effectively. And it says always to pray and not to faint. Look at verse 7 there. In verse 7 it says, And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? Look at verse 8. In verse 8 it says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily nevertheless when the son of man cometh tell me shall he find faith on the earth it doesn't say shall he find a cap covering them or not covering them not wearing the cap and not covering up when you are in church that's all right but the purpose is to pray every man that prays and if that prayer is not there the rest is worthless. Cover the head, don't cover the head, but you are not praying. You have the cap on, you don't have any cap on, but you are not praying. Then it's useless. The purpose of this chapter is to say that this is your comportment and this is your appearance when you are praying. And let's come back to chapter um, for chapter 11 of first corinthians first corinthians chapter 11 and we're reading again from verse 4 first corinthians chapter 11 verse 4 every man praying or prophesying every man praying or prophesying having his head covered this honored his head and now understand uh, here we are 
preaching what is prophesying you see there are people that know about what you have on the head what not to have on the head but they don't understand the praying and the prophesying what does it mean every man prophesying first corinthians chapter 14 we're looking at verse 3 first corinthians chapter 14 verse 3 but she that prophesied speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort that's the purpose uh, what i'm saying is it's good to have your dress on you cannot come out of the house naked but you put on the dress for a purpose the purpose of covering the head or not covering the head by the man is because of praying and prophesying and prophesying means speaking unto men to edification and to exhortation and to comfort let me ask you as you are being very serious about your dressing what you put on and what you don't put on have you been so serious about prophesying speaking unto men edifying them evangelizing them exhorting them and building them up are you developing yourself as you know much about dressing whether in the house of god or, or in the place of folk or anywhere and you're very careful as to what you put on what you don't put on are you that diligent as to praying are you that diligent as to prophesying in which means edifying other people educating other people evangelizing other people and exhorting other people i pray god will help us to be balanced in jesus name god will help me to be balanced in jesus name hey, look at uh, second timothy chapter 4 we're reading from verse 2 second timothy chapter 4 and we're looking at verse 2 it says preach the word you see that you know uh, many people concentrate on put on this don't put on this but the real thing is to get you ready and to get you equipped and to get you energized and to get you empowered to preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort without long suffering and doctrine look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says but watch thou in all things watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of your ministry the lord accomplished that in your life in jesus name give me a good good amen now we come to point number three point number three is the prophet of the woman's submission in his fullness again let's uh, understand submission is not a bad word submission is not a negative word you know there are some you know very good natured uh, you know sisters and mothers and wives and women they go along with you until you mention the word submission they say i don't like that word it gives me an idea of slavery that you know we don't understand in this community how a person should be by himself or herself and have the same authority that another person has submission mm. I don't like that word hold on the children have to submit to their parents when they were born as little babies what did they know and they have to submit the mother says we call this a clock we call this a bell we call this a table we call this a chair the child has to accept that he didn't know anything like that before he came to this world as he came to this world and that is submission 
We send our children to school and the children are expected to listen to their teachers. And when the teacher says three plus five is eight, the child cannot shake his head and say, Sir, I don't agree with that. How can three plus five be eight? I believe that three plus five ought to be 12. It's not what you believe. You see, in life, we have to submit to those ahead of us. Now, if the child gets to school and the principal draws the timetable and he says in the morning we're going to have mass, then we're going to have science subjects, later in the afternoon we're going to have history or civic or whatever, the child cannot say, I don't accept that timetable. The one, what I want is that when we get there in the morning, now the other student too can say that, other student too can say that there'll be no coordination. There'll be no unity in that school. You cannot teach anything in that school if there is no submission of the students to the arrangement, organization of the heads of the school. Now we'll come to work. And as we come to work, we'll say, this is what to do, and this is when to do it, and everybody must toe the line. Everybody must do it like this. I don't like that. I don't like that. We're out of school already. I don't want to be in slavery. Submission, submission. But you understand, Jesus Christ was submitted to the Father as a son, not a slave. And every man, as a child of God, is submissive to the Savior in gratitude. Look at what Christ has done for me. Because of that, I submit to him. Do you know, brothers and sisters, is that submission in life, in any area and every area, that brings productivity, that brings fruitfulness, that brings joy, that brings agreement, and everything is working well, there will be fruitfulness in your life. There will be progress in your life. So, dear sisters, ladies, sisters, wives, mothers, submission is a good word. Dust it off. All the dust that came on that word that you were thinking as a bad word. No, you are not a slave. You're a real child of God. But God demands submission of the wife to the husband. And when things are in line like that, your family will be a fruit. Your life will be a fruit. I'm telling you, the joy of the Lord will be the support of every area of your life in Jesus' name. Now, we're coming to 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'm reading from verse 3 again. It says in verse 3, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man a particular man that's your husband he is the man look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says but every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonoreth her head Come with me, deeper life. You know, somebody is coming to our church and she happens to be a lady. And as we see her entering by that door, she has not covered her head. And so somebody will run there and bring out an extra scarf and give her and say, don't enter yet, don't enter yet, cover your head. Well, to start with, we don't know whether she's born again or she's not born again. We don't know whether she even knows anything about prayer or not. We don't know whether she knows anything about prophesying or not. And we say, stay there by the door. We delay her there. You must cover your head. Every woman that prays or prophesies, every woman that prays, 
or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head and there are people that will not even allow those ladies to get saved those ladies to understand the word of God and they confront them out there before they even enter the church and they're not praying, they didn't know how to pray, they're not prophesying, they don't know how to prophesy, but we impose on them, you must have this now. And if that lady says, what kind of church is this? That me, a dignified woman coming from my place and I just want to fellowship here today and they treat me like a primary school girl and say you must have this and even brought something out for me to wear that will not match my dress that's my last time I'm not going there you see because we do not understand how to position the word of God we drive a lot of people away I pray God will give us understanding in his word in Jesus name and then even for us who are inside now you are born again now you are a child of God and you are a system already you know that you'll cover your head when you come to the church and when you are supposed to pray and when you are supposed to prophesy but then your emphasis is on covering 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 you might not even be praying you might be dozing and sleeping while the rest of the people are praying but you know i have fulfilled all righteousness i have covered my head you know what the scripture is saying the scripture is saying the purpose of covering the head for the woman is when you pray or prophesy are you following and let me open everything to you there are sisters that cover their head I would say at least 20 hours of every day in church the cover on the street the cover while eating the cover anything they're doing anywhere they're going even inside their own room the cover they're not praying they're not prophesying but they cover, cover, cover. Eventually, the air, because of the heat, will be emitting odor. Am I right? So what kind of pastor is this? This is the kind of pastor that will tell you everything you need to hear. Praise the Lord. There are some people even when they are taking their baths because they are not going to wash the air at that time the covering is still there now you put yourself in such bondage because you never read the word every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head for that is even all one as if she were shaven and then in verse 6 look at verse 6 there it says for if the woman be not covered remember when praying when prophesying let her also be shown for if he it be a shame for the woman to be shorn or shaven let her be covered look at verse 9 in verse 9 it says neither was the man created for the woman but the woman for the man the woman for the man the woman for the man look up here if i don't tell you maybe nobody else will tell you there are some wives they don't make themselves clean beautiful attractive to their husbands 
he has married me, he has married me. He cannot divorce me. And so there's nothing he can do. And they dress shabbily. And they will not present themselves attractive to their husband. It says the woman was made for that man. There are some singles. I was going to have a single seminar. On the feast of June, Saturday. I pray you'll be there. Because anything that has hindered you from getting bone of your bone, flesh of your flesh, we're going to cancel everything in Jesus' name. But you know, my brothers and sisters, here we are. There are sisters, single sisters. They, they're not presentable. You can see their problems on their faces. And the way they carry themselves. You know, anybody that even knows the will of God will say, if I bring this one in, I'm bringing another load. I have enough load for myself. Cheer up. You're a child of the king. And as you cheer up and you present yourself properly like you ought to do, I pray everything you've been praying about, the Lord will answer in Jesus' name. Now, now, it says every man that prays or prophesies, every woman that prays or prophesies, that means that the reason why we are covering the head as a woman is because either you are praying, you are having a quiet time, either you are praying, you are praying for a specific thing, either in the house or anywhere you are, you are praying, and then you are prophesying, you are teaching the word of God, you are evangelizing. That's when it says you bring a cover on your head. And I pray that God will help you. The power to pray. And the promises you stand upon when you pray. The Lord will grant you the heart to abide in Jesus' name. And look at, uh, look at this. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2. We're reading from verse 17. Acts chapter 2. What do you mean from verse 17? It says, and it shall come to pass, in the last days, says God, I will pour my spirit upon all flesh. You receive the Holy Ghost. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your sons, the men, your daughters, the women, your sons, the brothers, your, your daughters, the sisters will prophesy. And then it says, and your young men shall see visions. And your old men shall dream dreams. And look at uh, the next verse there in verse 18. And on my servants. And on my handmaidens, when I pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall tell me when a sister receives salvation, she has the eagerness to tell other people about that salvation. When you are sanctified as a sister, you have the passion, the desire to tell other people to you. And now when you are filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized in the Holy Ghost, you also have the urge, the desire, the passion. It becomes a habit now. You want to be telling other people that's the praying or the prophesying. And then at that time, you cover your head. It doesn't mean that when you're on the road, that you know you must uh, keep the cover on and when you are cooking in the kitchen you're not praying or prophesying you must keep the cover on everywhere even when you are sleeping you keep the cover on it doesn't mean that i know there are people that do it like that but that's not doing the scriptures that's just following their own personal understanding or their personal dedication that God has not required from them. And I pray that the word of God we have heard today will be a fruit in your life. Look, let's come back to 1 Corinthians now. And I'm reading from verse 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 16. But 
church if any man seems to be contentious if any woman seems to be contentious if any learner is not submissive and he seems to be contentious we have no such custom of contention in the church neither in the churches of god somebody say praise the lord now today is miracle monday how many of you have come for the power of god in your life the power of god will move in your life in jesus name as we look at this passage I want to show you some things before we pray. Number one is to recognize the head. Recognize the head. It says Christ is the head of everyone and God is the head of Christ. And you recognize that anytime you open the Bible, anytime you study the word of God, recognize that here you are here down below, there he is up above. Number one is to recognize the head. The head contains your thinking faculty. Your head contains everything you need to give direction and to give strength and power and focus and vision to every member of the body and if your life is going to have direction you must recognize God as the head number one recognize the head number two reverence the head honor him honor him when you are praying as a man you remove that covering and when you are praying as a woman you put your covering on and you honor the head you honor Christ the head of the church when you do that honor him and reverence the head number three is to rely on the head rely on the head the hand cannot do anything without relying on the head and the eyes cannot focus unless the eyes rely on the head and the mouth cannot speak what's appropriate unless the mouth relies on the head and the breathing the thing that supports life cannot function very well except to rely on the head every member of the body of christ will need to rely on the head you rely on him for salvation you rely on him for your healing you rely on him for your deliverance you rely on him for answers to prayer and i want to tell you tonight as you don't rely on your own thoughts on your own mind and you rely on the lord alone he will answer your prayer tonight have faith in god have faith in god that if you have faith as the seed of the mustard and you say to this mountain be thou removed it shall be removed and nothing shall be impossible unto you therefore i say unto you whatsoever things ye pray for believing ye shall receive i will receive I will receive, rely on the head, and then respect your own head. Respect your own head. You know, the wife as the husband as the head. The members of the church have the pastor as the head, and the parent, the children have their parents as the head. You see, when there is that respect, you cannot see God face to face. But it's the one here representing God on your behalf. That's the one that represents the head. And it becomes your head. He is shepherd, he is pastor his leader his head you respect him and when that respect is there you know everything will just fall in line in your life this one is like a jigsaw it's like this one is should not be there that one is not there that one is not there when that respect is there for your head for the head and let's say for example in your place of work 
there are heads there respect them honor them and then in the community there are heads there respect them and when you come to the church you have a head in the church respect the head and the lord will answer your prayer reconcile with your head reconcile with your head husband and wife if there is any kind of disagreement and any kind of tearing apart you know i'm going this way and then you are going the other way the lord is saying what is this disunity there cannot be answered prayer it says when you bring your offering you bring your gift to the altar and you remember somebody has something ought against you especially your head your husband especially your head the one who is above you it says leave your gift at the altar and then come and reconcile when you reconcile then come back and offer your gift and your gift will be acceptable in jesus name then realize your own headship realize your own headship the lord has given us a promise he has said you will be the head you will not be the tail what is the person i'm talking about you'll be the head you'll not be the tail in jesus name you will you will realize your own headship you say praise the lord i know that i am head i am not tail and when i ask the lord the lord will answer my prayer whatever has put you down and whatever has kept you down today the lord will lift you up in jesus name number one is to recognize the head god almighty and christ the head of the church number two is to reverence that means to honor the head number three is to rely completely without reservation rely on the head number four is to respect your head respect your head and then number five is to reconcile with your head number six is to realize your headship what part we're going up we're soaring above and whatever has brought you down the lord will lift you up to your headship in jesus name <laughs> number seven are you ready number seven renounce all headiness renounce all headiness you see there are people who are heady and whatever they hear in the world whatever they learn in the world they just drop it there and they say what i have always done is what i will continue to do they're heady but the lord is saying renounce all headiness now you've been going on a particular road and you have not got to your destination and you keep on going that same road that's not right if you want your destination that headiness that says i'm sticking my head there that's exactly what i'm going to do the lord is saying i have better things for you but you know your problem your problem is that you never listen you never change anything you never turn around why don't you for this time at the time of soaring above why don't you turn around and remove and renounce all head and then everything will go better for you in your life in jesus name that's why now you are going to check up your life is that any area of headiness any area of you know that's what i am that's what i will always do the lord wants to be a new he wants you to be a new creature and as for a new creature today and things are different i'm telling you you rely on christ the head all your answers all your answers will come all your problems will be solved amen <laughs> praise the lord miracle time has come power time has come anointing time has come and the lord will effect everything in your life in jesus name 
Once again, everyone, I welcome you to Miracle Monday. Rise up now, rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. You see what we have learned today. You see what the Lord has revealed to us today. He wants us to understand the submission of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why he came from heaven and that's why he gave himself so that, so that, so that you will become saved and then you will become a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ in everything that he has routine in the world you will not add your own idea you will not add your own tribal um, indoctrination you will not add your own tradition but you say here is the word I believe the word I stand on the word open your mouth and pray and talk to the Lord and let the Lord help you let the Lord help you and know that Jesus Christ is your head. Jesus Christ is the head of the church and is the head of every member in the church. Tell the Lord, tell the Lord, tell the Lord, I accept his headship. I respect his headship. I believe in his headship. I submit to the headship of the Lord Jesus Christ. Tell the Lord, now brush up that word submission. It's not a bad word, it's a good word. It's a word used for the Lord Jesus Christ. He submitted to the Heavenly Father. And then every man, every member of the church should submit to the headship of Christ. And every woman should submit also to the headship of the husband and if there's been disunity in the home disagreement in the home lack of submission in the home go back and reconcile with the head reconcile with the head tell the lord Obedience brings blessing. Any new thing you have learned today, any new thing you have heard today, bring it to the Lord in prayer. And say, Lord, I've misled other people. Cover the head, cover the head, cover the head, even when they are sleeping. Cover the head, cover the head, even when they are taking their baths cover the head at all times when you pray when you prophesy and if you're a preacher don't go back to your local assembly and say although you had this at the central church taught by the general superintendent in our corner here this is what we will do that's contention that's rebellion submit yourself to the word of god and then what blessing abide in your life in everything you do every action of your hand and your lifestyle be seat on the word if you have not been following christ you've been going your own way repent renounce all heaviness and say lord i come here i am here i am i give myself unreservedly unto you and they were the blessing of obedience karma in your life
In Jesus' name we pray. And the believing, submissive people of God said, Amen. It's bowed and eyes closed. What a great chance you have today to come under the power, the provision, the promise, and all the things that are provided from Calvary. Bow your head and close your eyes. You have realized how you have been living your life and that has not been according to the word of God. But now you say, Christ will be my Lord. Christ will be my Savior. Wherever you are, please raise up your hand. You are giving yourself to the Lord. You are submitting to the Lord. And you are surrendering all your sins, all your iniquity, every bad thing you have ever done. You are surrendering everything to the Lord. Lord, here I come. Receive me. The Lord will receive you. Wherever you are, I'm going to pray for you. But anywhere you are, in all the various uh, locations and districts, anywhere, everywhere, I want you to raise up your hand and give yourself to the Lord fully, completely, wholeheartedly, without any reservation. And you say, Lord, here am I. I come. I surrender myself. I give myself to you. Save me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. The Lord will do it. Raise up your hand. The Lord is waiting for you. At the gallery, ground floor, outside, anywhere you are, just raise up that hand. And say, Lord, I surrender my life to Christ, my Savior. I make him my Lord right now. He will receive you. Whosoever come to me, I will in no wise cast out. He receives every repentant sinner. Do that quickly. While you raise up your hand, confess to the Lord and repent of bad, bad things you've done, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. If we confess and forsake our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to pray with you now. Are you ready? I said, are you ready? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord, because of your call. We thank you because of your love and mercy and grace. You have invited everyone having burden of sin, having guilt of sin to come for forgiveness and freedom. And I pray, Lord, as they come, wholeheartedly turning away from their sin and receiving Jesus as their personal Savior, forgive them in Jesus' name. Grant them your salvation. Grant them the power over sin. Grant them your grace to live the new life in Christ in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord that you are saved. Praise the Lord that you are forgiven. Praise the Lord that the grace of God is now in your life. Things will no longer remain the same. Our um, leaders and ushers and members of the choir are there all around you there. They'll give you a card, fill the card, and then uh, after that, break time now, we we'll pray for your healing miracles today. Power manifestation today. Spiritual supernatural demonstration today. It will happen in Jesus' name. Very quickly, very quickly. Give those names, write those names. And all the things that are required there. The Lord wants you to be faithful, to be sincere. When we give our lives to the Lord, we don't tell lies anymore. You write the correct uh, number there, telephone number. You write the correct uh, information there that we're asking for. And the Lord will know that you are sincere and you have sincerely, wholeheartedly given your life to the Lord. Your joy, your salvation will keep on increasing in Jesus' name. 
let's do that very quickly and then we're going to pray the miracle prayer this is my miracle monday me i'm talking about me this is my miracle monday it will not pass me by and then tomorrow we're going to finalize everything with a triumphant tuesday you must be there you, because you know that last day that last time the best of what you have ever seen the greatest of what you have ever seen triumphant tuesday will be yours in jesus name we're waiting for those uh, leaders and brothers sisters who are collecting the names please uh, do that very quickly First gallery, second gallery, let's be very fast. All workers are expected to participate. All workers are expected to join. Quickly, let's be fast. get involved in attending to those who are giving their lives to Christ. Let's do that quickly. Please indicate quickly as soon as you are done with your floor. Thank you. Second, first gallery, are you, <coughs> are you true? First, you are still on. Second gallery. Done. Okay, we are waiting for the middle gallery, please. First gallery, please do quick. Other counselors should quickly join them from the first, from the grand floor and the last gallery, please join the first gallery. Everybody praise the Lord. My time has come. What are you? It will happen. Accept the Lord as the head and the head plans for every member of the body and as we rely on the head that faith will bring miracle in your life. Whatever burden, whatever sickness, whatever infirmity, whatever deformity, whatever broken bone, whatever incurable disease, the Lord will touch you and take that thing away. Yeah. He's willing, he's able, and this is the moment for you to receive. Yeah. I will receive. We're ready to pray now. Lay your hand on yourself and raise up the other hand. 
Father, in Jesus' name. We thank you because the Lord is our head. He is our Savior. He is our Lord. He is our King of Kings. He is our doctor. He is our healer. He is our creator. He is everything for us. Lord, I pray for all your people right now. Touch everyone miraculously in Jesus' name. Make this day the day of their healing and the day of their miracle and the day of your power in their lives. I pray that every infirmity, every sickness, every evil sin that the devil has packed in there, I command, come out in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, those who have insanity or mental problem, touch them now, deliver them in Jesus' name. The so have eyesight problem, either they're totally blind or partially blind. Lord, I pray that you will open those blind eyes now. Heal them in Jesus' name. Those who are deaf and dumb, whether you are deaf in one ear, in both ears, I send the power of the Holy Ghost to you right there now. Let those ears be opened in Jesus' name. Those who are paralyzed, those who have stroke, this is your day. And after the final amen, you rise up, the power of God will lift you up. Be healed in Jesus' name. Those broken bones, I pray, be joined together right now. And let total healing come on those broken bones in Jesus' name. Pain in the stomach and pain in the chest and pain at the back and pain anywhere, everywhere. Lord, you are the Lord, our peace. Bring peace and take all forms of pain away in Jesus' name. I'm asking Lord those who have incurable disease like cancer or like tuberculosis or like whatever it is or any other kind of sickness that appear to have defied medical solution. I pray Lord that you come upon them right now. Heal them in Jesus name. I pray that your power, I pray that your unction, I pray that the anointing that breaks every yoke will break all the yokes of your life. Receive your miracle. Receive your healing. Receive your deliverance. Thank you, Lord, because I know you've done it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is done. Amen. It is done. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is done. You can do better. You can do better. It is done. Miracle Monday. You have got your miracle. You are a candidate of miracle. It is done. It has been.